Brad and Ian who are going to accept it. I think it will. He most likely will. I just can't say for sure. Well, I call the secretary. I got Donnie out there working on it. I just hope it doesn't come. Saw me wet. Oh, <laughs> I don't go on there more once or twice a week. Yeah, another one. Yeah, my daughter's uh, IHSS time was cut like in half. Oh man. So we're working with her to try and cut expenses. <laughs> okay, it's well, about that time. Good morning. Welcome to the July 28th Board of Supervisors meeting. Would you please stand with me as we salute the flag and remain standing for a moment of silence. Ready? Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. you. May be seated. Yeah, nice to see everybody here on a beautiful summer day. Our first item of business is public comment. Anybody wishing to address the board on an item that is not on today's agenda but under the board's preview, please step forward, state your name and record for the address, and we'll limit this to 15 minutes. And seeing nobody standing except Mr. Mirwald, <laughs> <laughs> we'll close the public comment time and bring this back to uh, the Board of Supervisors matters. Supervisor Innes, do you have anything for us yes, today? Uh, yes, on Thursday I will be going to uh, the Animal Control in Porterville where we have a Step Up Gang grant in process. We've got uh, some young people out there that are learning how to take care of the animals and and uh, I think getting a, a good education as well as uh, hopefully uh, sending these kids in the right direction. Because, you know, a lot of times when you work with animals, it tends to, to calm people. It tends to bring out the best in you. So looking forward to go over there and, and seeing those kids uh, on Thursday and seeing how they're progressing with their, uh, with their gang grant. That's it. Great. Supervisor Ashita. Nothing today. You're kidding. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't talk. Red. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor Worthley. Uh, met yesterday with an organizing group. They're going to be having a step-up program, a second one, in Cutler Rossi uh, on September 3rd. The focus is going to be on uh, adults and parents. And the Weed and Seed program, which is very active in Cutler Rossi, is in the process of uh, doing a very nice mural right now. It's uh, been ongoing in the heat. And uh, <laughs> I hope to get by there this evening and see the progress that's being made. Uh, I'll be in Sacramento this uh, Thursday evening, Friday morning for a Commission State Mandates uh, meeting, and hopefully things will be quiet in Sacramento. That's it. Hey, the, I saw pictures of that mural that covers the side of a building maybe 100 feet long. It's huge. Great. It looks good. The youth are doing a wonderful job. Supervisor Vanderpool. And on the uh, Step Up uh, Service Youth uh, Learning Grants, I'm uh, going to be going to uh, Tulare later on today to go see uh, the group of uh, young people in my area working on children's books at Tech Prep High School. So uh, that's a very positive thing, and it's good to see uh, at-risk youth doing some very positive things for the community. Um, and then also um, just wanted to say that I made two presentations regarding um, the rail last week, and that was very, uh, they were very positive presentations, got a few questions, 
uh, at the uh, City Council meeting in Tulare and then also at the Planning Commission meeting in Tulare. So it was a very positive uh, experience. And, and Tom Sparks, wherever you are, I'd like to thank you for uh, all of your efforts and for helping to answer questions as well. So that's what I had. Thank you. Uh, a week and a half ago, I attended a event with the La Sierra Military Academy who also received a step up service learning uh, grant. Those young folks rebuilt computers from a pile of computers that did not work and uh, put at least 15 computers together that I saw uh, going to an adoptions program and also so to uh, foster parents with foster children who could not afford uh, computers. So the, the step up service learning uh, grants are, are doing a wonderful job touching the lives I think of many teenagers. Um, the other thing I will announce, I was hoping to see under Sheriff Cleek here, but we were just a war, uh, notified this morning. Uh, we received a phone call from Vice President uh, Joe Biden's office in Washington, D.C., notifying the sheriff that uh, they received a COPS funding grant that would uh, fund 12 officers for this year, and that money comes from the recovery act and there he is as i finished making his announcement for him and i don't even think you're aware of this uh, under sheriff cleek you, you received a lot of money from the recovery act cops program this money morning are you here to make an announcement i see you have I, I do happen to have a little information okay well we'll invite you up to finish it off then i'll turn the rest of my time of supervisor matters over to under sheriff cleek well, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, it is indeed, um, you know, many days are not always happy and uh, you can't always say good morning, but today's a great morning, particularly for Tulare County and the, and the citizens and particularly for the Tulare County Sheriff's Department. Uh, you know, opportunity comes every so often and uh, we had an opportunity because of the recovery uh, monies that were provided by the federal government uh, for these funds and uh, we put in for 12 officers uh, a few months ago and in the course of our staff and their diligence uh, many many people working together collectively collaboratively particularly with our board with the CAO's office and and the relationships that we have um, I think we're very fortunate and we have been given uh, 3.179 a million dollars and this is going to be a tremendous uh, strengthening of our law enforcement uh, opportunities here in Tulare County so uh, I know the sheriff is extremely uh, happy he's been asking about this on a daily basis uh, wondering at you know what point in time we were going to hear something and so um, I know that um, he's very proud of the people that work in our organization to put this funding or the grant together so we do want to recognize everyone in this behalf of them. Wonderful news. When I called over this morning, there was a conga line dancing down the hallway <laughs> in the Sheriff's Department. It's still going on. <laughs> Probably tell, have time after board to tell, come on over. Tell, them to, to, tell them to get back to work then. <laughs> right. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. here's a question, Don. Is, that, uh, is this uh, specified for a particular purpose, or is it at the discretion of the department uh, as far as these funds? Well, it's going to go hand in hand with our community-based policing. Uh, we in particularly located or looked at our county, how we could best strengthen the 35 unincorporated communities that we serve. And the sheriff and as the board has supported over the years, you know, we've been on again, off again with funding and trying to keep our officers in some of these communities. And so uh, we're going to have 12 communities that are going to have their very own police officers providing services and being a, you know, more than a police officer. These officers really are uh, helping them with health and human services, RA, R, uh, RMA matters. Oh, uh, just so many things that they they can reach into and help the community and point them in the right direction so that's what community-based policing is about really being an interactive part of that area thank you <coughs> wonderful news mr chairman i, yes. I do have a question uh under sheriff when when do you expect that we're going to uh, see these officers in these communities when since you've received the grant well i i tell you you know there's a, there is a process and obviously as we have to the the paperwork and all those things go into place and then um, you know, 
At one time we did have struggles, you know, searching and finding people to work. I don't think that is the case. Uh, you know, unfortunately, our sister counties, uh, many of them are struggling very hard. Sacramento had 255 deputies laid off. There are some surrounding counties that are going to be challenged with that. And uh, so the, the field of opportunity is, is very ripe right now. And, but besides that in itself, you know, we have been doing a lot of work um, doing business differently. Uh, we've been reaching out and trying to find those candidates who just graduated from the police academy. We solicited them to come on board and be reserve officers and giving them an opportunity. And, you know, we have a lot of great people right here in Tulare County. They're homegrown and uh, this is where their families are, their roots are, this is where they want to be. So, we're, you know, we're, we're going to look at all of those individuals to provide them with an opportunity to live their dreams. Great news. Great news. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Let's come back any Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Tell them to go back to work. <laughs> okay. We will now move to our uh, consent calendar. We do need to pull item number 26 for separate consideration. Our addenda, uh, addendum uh, consent calendar item one we will pull for some minor clarifications. So are there any other items that need to be pulled from the consent calendar for separate consideration board? Anybody from the public desiring to pull an item from the consent calendar? Let's entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. Moved by Vanderpool, second by Worthley. We'll first take up item number 26. Passed unanimously. <laughs> it did pass unanimously. Thank you. Um, take up item number 26. Um, Mr. Chair, I, I would like to uh, pull item number 26 because that's dealing with the right of way ac acquisition on uh, the Road 108 widening project. Uh, that specifically deals with an owner by the name of Carrie Vanderpool. Carrie Vanderpool. Uh, is an aunt of mine uh, by marriage, and she's actually uh, no longer uh, married to my uncle. But um, <laughs> so, uh, but but she does have the uh, Vanderpool last name, and uh, for that reason, I wanted to pull this item and indicate that I have no financial interest uh, in this property, uh, and this is a relative of mine. But that does not affect the decision that is being made today. So and I'm it gonna... involves five hundred dollars. I move approval, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Second. <laughs> Moved by Worley, second by Ennis, with way too much information. <laughs> Approves unanimously. The addendum item number one has been pulled for some minor clarification. Mr. Huntley. Good morning, Chairman, members of the board. Um, you'll be acting on a couple of uh, MOUs today that include uh, a recommendation for a furlough. In the case of the physicians, we did not negotiate a furlough uh, because they actually bring in revenue from Medi Cal when they work. Instead, we uh, secured their agreement to an actual pay reduction. We inadvertently left out some language in this agenda item that would uh, maintain their same retirement contribution as if their pay were not reduced. That is an element of all the other agreements where there are furloughs. And so the language was in the furlough language rather than in the main agenda item. And since we didn't do furloughs, we overlooked it. So we're asking you to approve it with the understanding that the pay reduction will occur, but they will be held harmless for their retirement contribution, both from them individually and from the county. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Any questions from the public? See none, will entertain a motion. Move, Move approval. Moved by Vanderpool, second by Ennis. It's unanimous. Thank you. You can, don't go too far, Mr. Huntley. The Next item we will take up is our uh, first untimed item, which is an information item only. Uh, there was a bid opening, and you can see the um, by the agenda the number of bids that were received, the large number of bids. Are you working your way this way, Mr. Summers, to make a brief comment about this? Good morning. Brian Summers, Senior Capital Projects Coordinator. And... Uh, we did have a large number of bids on this, 15 to be exact. We were uh, very pleasantly surprised. This was for the uh, first phase of the Mooney Grove Park Bike and Trail Project, and this will be installing the uh, bridge, one section of the old Thule Historic Bridge. 
that will uh, connect the existing museum grounds to the new museum under construction. So we were very pleasantly surprised. Not only did we get a large amount of bids, we also came in underneath our engineer's estimate. Um, staff has done due diligence. Everything checked out for the apparent low bidder. And uh, we'll be bringing an item back to your board on the August 11th meeting to request that you award the project. Great. And paint will be dry before August or before October 15th? That is the plan. Wonderful. Very good. Any, any, any questions? Thank you. That was an information item only. Okay, we'll now move to our addendum item number two. Mr. Huntley. Good morning again. Um, back in May, the county administrative officer put together a uh, proposed budget that anticipated the need to secure savings in the area of compensation from uh, our county employees. And we commenced a, a negotiation process with a variety of bargaining units. And on June the 16th of this year, the, uh, Mr. Rousseau met with uh, all of the representatives of the various unions and associations to describe uh, the plan that he was proposing for us to bargain uh, about as it relates to um, employee compensation and benefits. There were also three meetings on that date in which all of the county's approximately 500 unrepresented <coughs> employees were invited and they had an opportunity to hear from Mr. Russo the specifics of his proposal. Uh, what we are presenting to you today is a recommendation to implement those items which were discussed back in June. Uh, essentially, there are four elements to this proposal. One is uh, to suspend uh, merit or step increases and flexible, flexibly allocated position promotions. And without going into a lot of detail, flexibly allocated promotions are a series of promotions that don't go through the normal testing process, but rather based with time and grade. And they look very much like a step increase, but they're actually a change in title. So the proposal is to suspend all step increases and flexibly allocated promotions uh, for the year. Obviously, um, we don't have a contract with the unrepresented employees, so these items are essentially open-ended. Uh, the second item was to suspend the um, matching grant or the matching funding for the deferred compensation program for our unrepresented employees. Presently, that program provides $1 for every $4 that the employee puts forward uh, for deferred, into deferred comp up to a maximum of $1,500. Um, that program is proposed for suspension. Uh, the county has had a leave reimbursement uh, program for uh, employees who don't use any of their sick leave. It's, uh, it's a program that's been around for a number of years. And <coughs> Uh, that program would normally call for uh, paying the employees and reducing their sick leave balance in December based on what they did between October of the prior year and October of the current year. That program is proposed to be suspended as well. And uh, the fourth uh, item was um, a furlough. And the proposal there is a 40-hour furlough over the course of the year, which has a, the impact of essentially reducing compensation a little, by a little bit under 2%. And as I spoke uh, a moment ago regarding the doctors, um, all of the benefits associated with compensation would remain unchanged. Uh, just the actual pay, the gross <coughs> pay, would be affected by the reduction from the furlough. Um, I think it's probably important to note that in our discussions with the various employee bargaining units, um, they were very curious as to what was going to happen to management, how management was going to be treated in this instance. We were very forthcoming to them. and. Uh, told them that uh, everyone was going to, quite frankly, have to share the pain. And so by bringing this item to you first, really, on the list, this is an opportunity for 
the board uh, to take action which demonstrates that the managerial employees of the county um, are uh, suffering the, the negative impact of our current financial situation. Essentially, the unrepresented employees, uh, which I said approximate 500, represent about 14 percent of the workforce. But when we break down the actual uh, impact on their group of the total savings projected, if we were to achieve this same set of uh, takebacks, if you will, with the, uh, all of the affected unions, uh, they would represent one quarter of the actual savings to the county. <clears throat> and this is partly because they're higher paid, and it's also partly because they have the deferred compensation benefit, which is not enjoyed by all the bargaining units, although a couple of them do have it. Um, there is also some information regarding uh, elected officials, and uh, they will be affected under those things which by law uh, they can uh, be uh, adjusted for, and that's uh, principally the uh, uh, deferred compensation match. Um, they obviously don't get sick leave buyback because they don't have sick leave, so we can't uh, mandate that. They're not merit increases. There are no step increases for the board salaries. They don't change. So. Uh, nor for the other elected officials. So the items which are being touched uh, for the electeds are different, um, but it's only because they really don't have those benefits. So that's a summary of uh, our recommendation, and I would be pleased to respond to any questions. Uh, there were you know, five, six, and seven on the second page were items it looks like were uh, specific to other folks. Six, the fire battalion chiefs having their a holiday pay reduced from what 96 hours to 39 and then a, a language about new hirees and I think we've talked about this and had part of this in place for quite some time as well and this, there's nothing new news here correct uh, that that's correct actually as we speak I'm expecting a representative of the fire association to sign the MOU uh, to bring to you and uh, what is proposed for the fire battalion chiefs is what uh, was agreed to with the Fire Association bargaining unit. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. I should have mentioned that. Any questions? Mr. Huntley, this is not a public hearing. Any comments from the public? Thank you, Mr. Huntley. Seeing none, we will bring this back to the board for action. Move for approval. Second. Moved by Ennis, seconded by Ishida. It is unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Huntley. <clears throat> well, we have seven minutes before our scheduled uh, timed hearing. Uh, Madam Council, do we have anything that we can take care of in closed session before uh, the 9.30 hour or close thereto? Yes, we do. Uh, we have uh, items A through G on your board's uh, closed session agenda. Item D is off agenda. Okay, so we'll adjourn to closed session for five to ten minutes, see if we can't take um, care of some of those items, and we'll be back. Okay, we are back in open session. We'll now take our timed item, which is item number three up, amendment to the Traver Redevelopment Project Area 20509 Implementation Plan. Mr. Hader. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. November 9th, uh, William Hader, Deputy Director, Tulare County Redevelopment Agency. 
On November 9th, 2004, under resolution RA 2004-22, your board as required under California Health and Safety Code Section 33490 Part C adopted the 2004-2009 implementation plan for the redevelopment project area. Prior to the adoption, several public meetings were conducted within Traver to discuss the goals and objectives for the community and for the five-year planning period. The community set forth its priorities contained in Section G, Goals, Objectives, and Specific Projects for Elimination of Blight. The community's intent is to achieve economic prosperity through redevelopment. However, all of the participants are very much aware that several impediments exist that preclude any substantial growth. Within the Traver RDA plan adopted in 1989, three areas for assistance through redevelopment were identified. Increasing the capture of potential commercial trade originating through traffic on 99, Highway 99. Improvements to existing infrastructure supporting the project area, particularly streets, sewer, water, stormwater, curb gutter, sidewalk. Remove existing impediments to the economic development of the community and elimination or mitigation of other existing blighting conditions and influences, including incompatible land uses, obsolete or substandard structures, inadequate public facilities, and or small irregular and landlocked parcels. In the intervening period since the adoption of the 2004 Traver Implementation Plan, several issues of statewide and countywide importance regarding water quality and quantity have arisen that have long-term health and safety effects on our unincorporated communities, including state regulatory changes that impact our ability to achieve our goals and projects. These were a prolonged drought that has led Tulare County to declare, to declare a drought emergency as available water supplies are diminished. Community water systems that must now address overdrafting of their water tables and pollution of our water sources in our rural communities from uh, contaminants such as nitrates that have degraded the quality of our drinking water, requiring implementation of treatment measures to remove, limit, or prevent intrusion of pollutants. With nitrates being one of the most common contaminants, the state is implementing new requirements for limiting nitrate intrusion that requires treatment of domestic wastewater effluent for nitrate removal. This has been experienced in some of our other communities within the county. To assist the community more effectively, staff requests that your board conduct a public hearing on the agency's request to modify the objectives and specific projects as follows. Under the goals and objectives, modify section two objective, address health and safety issues that affect the quality and quantity of the community water supply and the regulatory limitations to expansion of the sewage system, which currently impinge upon the quality of life and environment of the residents and limit development opportunities. And under section three, specific projects, implement a community-wide water conservation program to rebate, install, and or replace toilets, shower heads with low flow uh, appliances and, oh, excuse me, low flow uh, items and to uh, offset the cost of low water consumption devices such as appliances. If feasible, establish a public-private partnership to upgrade the water, wastewater treatment facility to improve efficiencies and provide for groundwater recharge capabilities. Staff will answer any questions that you may have. Any questions of staff? Board? Seeing none, this is a public hearing. Those addressing or wishing to address the board in this item, please step forward, state your name and address for the record. I'll count to three. Seeing none, we will bring this back to the board. Any comments, board? Mr. Chairman, I'm uh, just thankful that we've got this matter to uh, our attention and uh, there's some proposed uh, projects in the, in the Traver area which I think will benefit uh, Traver but also have the potential to be of a benefit to all of, of uh, actually the San Joaquin Valley if things work out and as we think they will. Uh, this could be a, a, a real seat change in terms of how we look at treating effluent <clears throat> and uh, so I want to thank staff for bringing this to us and uh, move approval. 
Second. Moved by Worthley, second by Ennis, and the vote is unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Thank Hader. You. Okay, we have a few items left on our closed session agenda, Madam Council. Yes, I, do. I do not anticipate any announcement. Thank you very much. We are adjourned to closed session. Thank you for attending. <laughs>